Joining me now is Senator Al Franken, a Democrat from Minnesota. Sir, thank you much for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. My, my pleasure. It's a pleasure to be on your premiere show. Uh, I had understood I was going to be on, uh, I was going to kind of be your sidekick, and I was going to be on every week, but was really? told that just. We only invited you for six minutes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'll do sorry. The Although we are happy to have you back whenever you want. Okay, it's very different um, than what I understood. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that we just played something from, I think you used to want that job at one point, the weekend update. Yeah, I wanted. <laughs> That's right, you read the book. I did okay, read your yes. Book. I, I, uh, I, did, I never got the anchors, but that was fine. That's fine. I'm senator. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy here. Very happy, happy here. here. But you want to be co host of KCDC. I was kind of, well, it's a Sunday night. Uh -huh. Perfect. You know, have to be back in Washington on, on Monday. This, this could have been a good transition to getting back to, to work. All right. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Let's talk about your actual day job, health care. Uh -huh. uh, we were talking earlier with Senator Susan Collins about what may or may not happen with the bipartisan negotiations that have been go going on with Patty Murray uh, and Lamar Alexander in the health uh, committee. The ranking and chair of the health committee, which Susan is on, which I'm on. And, where, and where do those negotiations stand right now? I mean, it, it seems like Republican leaders basically shut them down to try to make a, take another shot at repealing. To do Graham Cassidy. Exactly. Yeah, we had these great bipartisan hearings in the health committee where uh, the first hearing we had five insurance uh, state insurance commissioners three from republican states two from democratic states they all agreed got to continue the uh, cost sharing reduction payments got to do that uh, two days later the second hearing five governors three from republican states two from democratic states all agreed got to continue the cost sharing uh, reduction payments doesn't make any sense not to because actually when you it, it, it would drive insurance premiums up 20% mm -hmm. so the whole point of the this thing was to, to get the the uh, exchanges on, on more secure footing people want the price the, the premiums so, to go down right hang on in addition in addition it would r increase the deficit by 194 billion dollars according to CBO because the government would have to pay more subsidies exactly yes so makes no sense whatsoever everyone knows that and what the president is doing here is sabotage but does what's the realistic possibility of something passing the Congress I mean Republicans were complaining Democrats were basically drawing too hard a line and asking for too much well, uh, first of all, I think if we just said continue the cost sharing <laughs> reduction payments, that would be that would be fine. I think if there's a negotiation, I know that Lamar Alexander talks about giving states flexibility. We're fine with that, along as long as it doesn't unravel the protections that people with pre-existing conditions have mm -hmm. in terms of the essential essential health benefits. Um, let's let's switch topics a little bit. I want to show you uh, something that somewhat surprisingly, was on our Sunday morning talk shows this morning. This is Rex Tillerson talking to Jake Tapper about the Iran deal. Okay. You have a cattle ranch. You don't want to say anything about uh, the Sen senator uh, calling, suggesting you've been gelded before the world? That's not anything that bothers you? I checked. I'm fully intact. <laughs> That was his response to Bob Corker saying that effectively Rex Tillerson has been castrated here. What what do you think are the implications of the infighting and those kinds of discussions among Republicans, among the Trump foreign policy team for the country? It does seem, seem that the adults and uh, the foreign policy team seems to be those people. I'm talking about the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, the Secretary of State. They have been saying that uh, Iran is in compliance and that pulling out of this deal is uh, under, it, it just, it, 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 it's bad for the United States in so many different ways. Our Euro European allies, Russia, China, are not going to pull out. Uh, so it'll just leave us isolated. It undercuts our leadership in the world. And boy, with North Korea, this doesn't help. What kind of message does that send? That we abrogate every treaty that we sign, whether it's Paris or, or this, this, or every agreement? Uh, this is uh, uh, just undermines uh, our nation as a leader. And by the way, this was a good deal. It means that Iran will not get a nuclear weapon. Imagine where we would be on those other issues if Iran had gone and to a nuclear weapon. Added to the list of foreign policy crises. So we have spent a lot of time uh, on the air talking about 
Republicans and their infighting, but your own party, the Democrats, have got their fair share of back and forth. You were somebody who at one point, you had your finger on the progressive base of the party. I mean, you founded Air America and wrote a, a book about Rush Limbaugh, and now in this book you're saying, hey, I'm actually kind of friends with some Republicans. Um, yeah. Is that something that, you know, the Democratic base is so angry right now? I, I think they know that to get things done here, you have to work together, especially. But if is you're do in the you do they in Trump's Washington? I mean, it seems like they the, the they tolerance the, the the progressive base? base of the party that is going to hold whoever the nominee is in 2020. I haven't asked you yet if you're running in 2020. I know yeah, you said no in your last interview. Yeah. Absolutely ruling it out, never yes, going to do not, it. I'm not, I don't want to be president. Okay, so then your advice to whoever is the nominee in 2020, how do they handle a base that's so angry that they won't tolerate uh, being friends with a Republican? I, 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 when I go back to Minnesota, I was in Minnesota all this week, I didn't hear a lot of that, don't, don't talk to the Republicans. I heard a lot of, please get things done. Mm -hmm. please, please get things done in a way, I mean, uh, they didn't like what the Republicans were doing on health care. They hated Trump care. I'm co-chair of the Rural Health Caucus. I go all around Minnesota. I go to rural hospitals. People hated Trump care. It had like 17 percent approval. Uh, it, they want us to work together, get things done for them. That's that's. I know that Speaker Ryan said that, and uh, but he's actually right about that one thing. Mm. <laughs> Just that one thing. <laughs> that one thing. His, <laughs> his, it, well, when he was talking about tax reform, that's that's all about tax cuts for people at the top. That's what that is. It's another Republican trickle down thing, and and uh, you know that's why. We really should be doing things through regular order. Yeah. That's what John McCain said. And that's what we should have been doing in the health committee uh, and, and in the finance committee on health care. And do you know that the first uh, hearing that we had this Congress in the health committee was on exactly on shoring up the, the exchanges? Yeah. And that was in j early January before the president uh, was, was sworn in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tom Steyer, billionaire donor, uh, has essentially said that the litmus test for Democratic candidates, and he's considering running against Dianne Feinstein in California in a primary, should be, are you willing to say the president should be impeached? So do you think the president should be impeached? I think we have to wait until what Bob Mueller comes up with. I think we have a process in place. I think Tom Steyer is a great guy, but I don't agree with him on this one. I think that uh, Bob Mueller is in the right position. I think he's going to do this the right way. I don't think he should impeach someone for as, as much as I don't approve of the way the president has been doing his job or the way he acts outside the norms of, 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 of a president or as a human being. I uh, still think that we need to do this the right way. I don't think the American people will accept it. Uh, and I don't, I'm, uh, I'm agnostic on this until we find out exactly uh, whether the president broke the law. And I think Bob Mueller will tell us and whether it r rises to the high crimes and dis misdemeanors. Uh, we have to get, we have to go, but quick one word answer. The president has not attacked you yet, I don't think that I could find, but if he had to give you a nickname, little Marco, little Bob Corker, what would his nickname for you be? Giant of the Senate. It's gotta be one word. That's Giant. Four words. Giant Al Franken. Giant. There you Just have. giant. Everyone would know he was talking about. Uh huh. Okay. I see. Al Franken, thank you so much uh, for taking the time thank to do this tonight. Thank you. Congratulations on you. the You do on have an show. open invitation to come back anytime. Thank we you. really thank appreciate you having much. you. Thanks. Senator Al Franken, thanks so much. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.